Lithium, how we did it for less on the boat 122. So the lithium's arrived and I've opened uh, the first one up. These are the, they look like M8, M8 bolts and the covers. Positive terminal, it's got a little plastic protector in it. Same with the negative. Some nice big lifting straps there. I just uh, need to get them downstairs now and uh, well at least one down so I can just verify by actual size the measurements of the piece of timber I've got to cut out. I'll show you what it is we've got to cut out in a second. Connected a lot of the uh, cables that were on there previously, taking out the other batteries, just running on these two. And uh, what I've actually got to do is move the shunt from here out the way and then cut through this bulkhead here. And this piece of timber runs right the way through underneath the existing battery box, so it'll be just a case of cutting through there and then placing a new piece of timber in here to support the end of the other lithium battery. Um, I may even be able to lift this other tray out, cut that one out. Um, I'll have to see, well, I've got to cut through to see where it is. Um, and the problem is you can see that we're quite quite high here and the new batteries are even taller so I wouldn't be able to get the battery box covers in but I'll have a go at that in a minute when Cindy's finished training elephants up on the deck all right so before I go any further I've disabled uh, both of our solar regulators solar chargers uh, using the app so they're both off now and I'm going to turn our main battery bank switch to off and I'm going to unplug our charger our mains charger so there will be no current going to those battery terminals because obviously if I didn't switch off the solar and didn't switch off the battery charger um, then those terminals would still be live even though the batteries are disconnected so Let's get on with that. With all the batteries out now and the uh, electric off, the chargers disconnected, all our solar's off. That is the one I've got to cut along up there. If I can just move the camera like that, you can see. Now on the other side, as I said, the floor is lower. There's a false floor. And that piece of wood sits on there on that. so I'll cut that one out and I think we might be doing less alterations than I thought but we'll see so I've used my uh, Bosch multi-tool just to um, cut through the bottom there and through the side and I just need to remove these two Torx head screws and this should come out easily and effortlessly ha 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 if you're going to buy a multi-tool buy a good one don't buy a cheap one a Fen or Fine or a Bosch and go for the professional series professional series are usually in this dark blue well worth the extra money to get the professional ones so that's cut through there now that will clean up and sand up alright you can see the difference in height. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to cut down here see if I can get this other piece out and if this floor is at the same height the other side I can simply cut along here to hold the batteries so I can 
simply cut along here to hold the batteries on the other floor rather than this false floor that's in there and that will help secure them as well so let's cut that once I cut that out and I'd cut that out you can see that there is actually a big hollow under the floor there which means all I have to do is cut that square out there and the blasted lithiums will drop straight in without any problems at all this is all still really solid it's not a structural bulkhead I'll have a little bit of tidying up to do here and along there but otherwise yeah what a silly design could have had those weight that weight much much lower and saved yourself some money in production Mr Bavaria right well that's it all cut out look um, it was a bit difficult in getting this out because it's been stapled together with these crinkly staples so it didn't want to come apart even when I'd cut through it with a multi-tool I'm gonna to have to clean all the edges up sand them all round but basically there's another six inches underneath there which is really really annoying because when I made the cardboard boxes up as templates we were about two inches short and what I was going to do was to raise this up about two inches so that we had enough room for the terminals now I have more room than you can shake a stick at because all that space under there was completely wasted well if you're going to make a mistake I guess it's best to make a big one because in raising that up I had to go and buy a whole sheet of marine ply in half inch like this and as you know marine ply is extremely expensive the world over it was 750 Turkish lira for a sheet and they wouldn't cut it so if anyone wants to buy some marine ply and you're um, around the finicky area I may be able to do you a stunning deal hmm so all sanded down batteries down from upstairs and in they are that's made a nice neat installation and I've got plenty of room to run my other bits and pieces because I've got a small AGM that's going to go in there which will power the not power which is protection for the alternator via the battery to battery charger we won't be running the engine tonight it's actually starting to get a bit dark outside almost time to put the Christmas lights on so tonight I think what I'll do is I've got to change my charger over to lithium which will take a few minutes that's this one here and then I'll connect to one battery tonight and then rig the rest tomorrow when I've got more time I'm a bit out of time today so I spent four hours in the dentist. Here's a small section from our charger manual. You can see by setting the little tab switches, you can change it to lithium iron phosphate or life PO4, providing it's got a BMS internally. And that's what we did. It was just a matter of changing these little dip switches to 1001 to make the charger go lithium. Well, I'm working by torchlight now. Lucky the GoPro does quite well in dark. Um, so for tonight, we have only on one lithium. We've got our positive cable to the positive of that one, negative to the negative uh, through the shunt there. So at least we can see what it's doing. I've disconnected and had out our charger, uh, and I'll show you. There's a little uh, set of dip switches in there. I've got the full manual for this charger so um, it was quite easy to set that to lithium all I've got to do now is plug the mains back in which is I'll see it there we go green lights on so that's our pumps going off 
lights on in the cabin. Right, we are lithium. I'm going to finish that off tomorrow. Oh, well, last night uh, we ran out of time again. Um, mainly because I didn't expect to spend four hours in the dentist. But we are now wired up temporarily on the other battery. So what I need to do next is to create two negative leads of the same length to go to the shunt. I'm going to use the shunt as the bus bar. Um, our fuses are in there reading the same voltage and I have all my spare bits of cable crimps and uh, lugs already. Luckily we carry a few spares and spare bits of cable and I think we've got enough cable to make two leads up but they are going to be red which will be highly confusing so what I'll do is put some heat shrink around them make them black otherwise someone else like the next guy is going to get very very confused so a bit of wiring to tidy up these two negative wires here are for the voltage readout on the fuses they've got to be tidied up shortened up this red line positive that's a feed for the shunt for the Victron shunt that needs to be tidied up and then these crimps here need to be tidied up um, but what I'll need to do is turn everything off again disconnect the batteries so that we're not working on stuff live and there we are we are now entirely lithium powered let's do uh, a quick recap for you so this is our AGM battery we haven't wired that in yet we don't need to do that until we've got the battery to battery charger in the lithiums are charging from our um, mains charger so that's a 40 amp uh, 3 series charger it has 3 cables that come out one goes to our house bank which is here one goes to our AGM for our engine and one goes to the AGM for our bell thruster and our windlass so one 200 amp hour lithium second 200 amp hour lithium the cables a little bit untidy um, I think I can do better routing those but you'll note that all of these cables are the same length until they hit the bus bar I made a slight change I'm now using the shunt for the Victron battery monitor the BM712 as um, a bus bar and that's because I need to take all the loads from the other side and if I'd gone to a bus bar first um, I would have had to put it in after this I may still do that um, because, and the reason for that is there is room to do it here where these old screw holes for the old batteries were um, and that will tidy up this terminal here I'm not really happy with that I've put some black insulation tape around the uh, cables there just to hold them in place and stop them vibrating same on the live load side on the positive side two cables again exactly the same length go down to our fuses 150 amp fuses and they're reading the voltage through them and the observant of you may see that there appears to be 0.1 of a volt difference between there I'm going to get the meter out in a minute um, and just check the resistance between the bus bar and the relative batteries I think it's an inaccuracy of these fuse and not anything for us to worry about um, I think they're just not calibrated We're on to the final stage then, which is to put in our battery to battery uh, charger. This one here, smart charger, DC to DC or B to B. Now, let's show you this. If you can see the back there, that 
is our isolator. The bottom one of these terminals goes to the engine start battery and the way I did that was to put my multimeter on ohms with a little bleeper on it and measure between that terminal and the starter battery positive and it bleeped. So I then tried it on that one and it didn't bleep and on that one and it didn't bleep. So that was definitely the starter battery. Now what happens with this is the power from the alternator comes in on this terminal and then it's split off engine, domestics and bow thruster. So just to double check what I've done is I've found it at the other end but just to double check I'm checking that this one which I now know is the bow thruster uh, battery I'm making sure that I don't get a bleep at the other end. Let me show you the other end. Now, this is a bit of a pickle in here and I'm going to tidy this up I think. I'm never happy with it from new so the charge wire from that splitter comes out is this one here and that was on that terminal there where it went through that fuse so this one here and actually in German it says charging cable I don't know if you can see that it actually says charging cable um, so this is the one which is going to be the feed to our battery to battery charger now that only takes 30 amps so we don't need that huge great piece of cable there what I was hoping to do was put a bus bar there like that and then connect the battery to that and this one here is the negative bus bar we've got space on that so that's where the negative will come from so we've actually got our mains off at the moment um, we're running off lithium and the solar panels and as I suspected yesterday these fuses with the voltage display um, aren't calibrated precisely together and even on charging and on discharge we're getting 0.1 of a volt difference and I have checked the resistance of the cables and that's what it's down to so just the fact that they're not calibrated precisely together right, let's get this battery to battery charger out and see where we can put it I've now separated out the uh, charger cable as I said and that now goes down onto the battery positive the AGM the negative there is common so that can go back to the shunt which it does um, again I've tried to keep those cables the same length a bit difficult but managed it um, I've pulled the battery forward in order to get it get that terminal on and before I lock it down I've got to get some cables on there now, temporarily I used a piece of red and black to activate this and make sure that it was set to charger and it was set to lithium well actually the default on it is lithium so um, that was okay and then what I've got is this is the top of our old inverter we had a, an inverter it's about yay big I guess uh, how was it yay big it was about that big about four times the size it's um, aluminium so what I've done is cut it down drilled four holes in it and I'm going to mount the battery to battery charger on top of that that will work as an extra heat sink and uh, if it gets hot um, it will protect the bulkhead that I'm going to screw it to now there is quite a bit of ventilation in this bulkhead here there's a hole that goes up the back and up the back there where our charger is there's holes in the in the top of that for ventilation but if need be I'll put a little computer fan on there and I'll power that from the output side so that the computer fan only comes on when this is um, charging the lithium but we'll see how it goes I appear to run out of um, 
six mil cable i've got black but i haven't got any red so we might have to delay a bit well we're all done well just about so our battery to battery uh, charger victron is now fed from this agm the agm is fed from the alternator um, but the alternator only the negative is common one thing you do have to do which i found out is that the alternator sense wire which is that pink one there has to also go on there because the alternator senses how many battery volts there are and if you don't have that on it ramps up the uh, it wraps up the voltage quite a lot and then an alarm goes off so just started tying these cables up one thing I think I am going to do is I've got another one of these bus bars and I'm going to tidy this lot up here put put another bus bar here a short cable from the shunt to the bus bar and then I can sort these terminals out because I'm not happy with all those there and it makes it look untidy and there's plenty of room to do that so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to connect the um, AGM battery to the second monitor in position on the shunt there and what that will do is it will tell me what this battery state is on the BMV 712 so you see I've just started tying these cables back, tidying them up and the Orion uh, battery to battery charger is in there had the engine running, it's doing its job although it does get really quite warm so I think we may have to put a fan in there just so that the air in here can circulate but that is basically it the uh, I think once I've cable tied everything back I've left these uh, long specifically so that I've got enough to put the extra bus bar in there and then I can tidy all this lot up as well but yeah we are now fully lithiumed up on our domestics and our AGM uh, bow thruster um, battery is charged from the alternator or the charger in the back there and the same with the start battery uh, so far we haven't really put it for its paces but we'll do that in the next uh, season but uh, we've had it off for a couple of a couple of hours and uh, taken some life out of the out of these batteries and they're charging up okay with the solar and the mains charger no issues bit annoying that these two big fuses which display the voltage are always um, 1.1 1 .1 of a volt out um, I'm gonna take one of these out and see if I can calibrate it see if there's a, a little potentiometer in there that I can calibrate it to a known voltage um, but that's it basically we're done well got all good videos you should always have a summary. So we bought 400 amp hours, two 200 amp hour lithium batteries. They can be charged at up to 100 amp hours each, but the recommended charging current is 80 amp hours. The max voltage is 14.6. We bought an MPPT 130 from Victron. We bought two solar panels at 205 watts output each. We bought a Victron battery monitor BM712. We bought an Orion from Victron, a 121230 smart charger, and of course the batteries. And then of course we bought those two really spiffy 150 amp fuses. Then there was the bus bars as well. So the whole total for all of the work we've done was 35,797 Turkish Lira 
and with the exchange rate being what it is at the moment that comes out at 2753 UK pounds without the solar just the battery updates it was 2284 pounds so let's look at some of the advantages conventional lead acid including AGMs and gels get to 50% of their discharge and you really shouldn't take them much lower than that some of them can cope with it some can't but at 50% discharge their voltage is down below 12 volts now when you have lower volts you need more amps to drive the same piece of equipment with lithium you can go to at least 80% discharge and they're still putting out over 13 volts so let's look at some of the economics of lithium now here I've used the best that you're likely to get let's look at lifespan first Four 100 AGMs gives us 400 amp hours and we'll get a lifespan at depth of discharge of 50% at roughly 500 to 700 cycles at 200 amp hours usable that's 140,000 amp hours throughout their life whereas with lithium the same 400 amp hours gives you 320 at 80 percent discharge that's 1,600,000 amp hours in their projected lifetime and that's only based on 80 percent depth of discharge now some lithiums you can go down to an 85 or 90 percent depth of discharge it shortens their life but it can be done well we really hope you've enjoyed this video and our explanations diagrams and footage if you have leave us a thumbs up a like or share with others tell them about our videos even hit the subscribe button it's down in the bottom right hand corner if you really like our videos you could always buy us a beer at PayPal me SV and Pavidus. or you could think about becoming a Patreon our Patreons get lots of extra content they can track us as we go and they can be in contact with us almost 24 7 for the price of just a beer or a coffee once a month Patreons get lots of extra content and other things too why not pop over to www.patreon.com SV and Pavidus. Don't forget, sail safe. safe.